Alright, we have here a couple of radio scanning receivers from uh, Greecom, also known as GRE. The, uh, there's actually four models of these analog trunking scanners. There's, um, there's also some digital models as well, but I'm just going to be focusing on these four uh, for the time being. The, uh, the one on the left is the PSR 400, which is the mobile version of the PSR 300. These two share the exact same uh, features in programming. And then slightly newer, we have the uh, handheld PSR 310, which uh, is counterpart to the mobile PSR 410, which I actually just bought, and that's currently in my car. So I have a little bit of experience with that as well. Um, real quickly, the uh, main differences on these are going to be, um, well, first, firstly, all four of these share the same programming cable, which is nice. Uh, I've he had here one such one such cable. This is a, a Radio Shack programming cable. These go for about 20 bucks. Um, and they just use the uh, this little headphone style jack, which uh, goes here or here. Um, now, while they all four use the same programming cable, the two on the left uh, use different programming software as the two on the right. You can program all of these manually, but I don't recommend it because it's uh, very time consuming and kind of a headache. Um, so you'll need one piece of software for the two on the left, and you'll need a separate piece of software for the two on the right. Um, uh, so this, uh, listening to Portland Police Bureau. I think it's Andrew Powell we're checking on. Um, as, you, as you probably just noticed, the uh, display on these is a little bit different. Uh, one thing I noticed with the two mobile units is that the, uh, the 400 is actually easier to read while you're driving at a glance to see these buttons. Um, and the, uh, the 410, you can see the, the font on the, on the buttons is actually a little bit smaller and pinched, so it's kind of hard to, to glance and see which button you're pressing. The other big uh, interface difference I've noticed is the display. The, uh, while I do like the 310 and the 410 for the feature improvements, this insanely bright white LED backlit display, which you can't even read because it's blown out. Drop the camera setting here, so I can actually see what that looks like. Um, it's very distracting, uh, say you're driving around at night, you've got this mounted in your vehicle, and you have basically a big bright white light glaring at you. It's, uh, it's not great. I've got to figure out some sort of maybe tint film solution I can apply to that or something. Um, that's really my only gripe with uh, with these two newer models is is that white LED display. Um, I, I like, uh, so the ones on the left use a older uh, method of programming uh, which is uh, consists of scan banks that you input your frequencies into. I don't find that very intuitive. Um, the, uh, the newer ones here have uh, what is known as object-oriented programming. And you can read more about the differences between those two uh, methods of programming online. Um, but suffice it to say that the object-oriented programming is much more intuitive. I like that better. Um, uh, a couple of other uh, things that I noticed with, with the, uh, the 310 and the 410, or not that I noticed, but rather that they feature, uh, and ignore this, is just a piece of tape I threw up here. It's not, not a defect or anything. Um, one is, and you may have heard that beep just a second ago, and I can go ahead and re-demonstrate uh, that for us. Um, for every, let me drop the brightness down so you can actually see what's going on. For every object, and in, in this instance, uh, I have talk groups that we're, that we're using here as an example. Uh, for every object, you can assign either a, either or, or and a uh, LED flashing, which can see here. So right now I have flashing blue LED to mean that I'm listening to Portland Police Bureau Central Dispatch. And you can customize that to whatever color you want, flashing or steady. Um, but uh, it's kind of a nice quick reference. So, you know, let's say when I'm at work, I have this, you know, in a, in a radio pouch. Um, I can just glance down at the top of that and see, oh, we're, you know, this, this is a talk group I'm listening to. Um, and while I'm on the subject of carrying this at work, uh, one thing to notice is that the silk screening on the buttons does tend to wear off. If I 
we'll focus on that. You can see the corners there and a little bit of this guy here. Um, just cosmetic, but uh, something to know. See, there's a yellow LED solid. Um, and uh, so to, to be aware of that. Um, but aside from the LED, the other the other feature that I that I like about this is the ability to not only assign an, a customizable LED color to an object, but uh, also an alert tone. So the ones you've heard for the most part so far don't have any alert tones, um, but if I wanted to, every time a talk group pops up or every time a conventional a given conventional frequency pops up, you can have one of these uh, tones uh, play. Um, I use the short beeps, I don't use the long ones, and as I run through them, you'll quickly find out why. So here we go. And uh, so the, the ring and the high-low, um, not not really into those because basically every time somebody keys up you're going to hear that um, however the double uh, the double chirp or the, the quick high low beep those are quite nice to know you know let's say i'm listening to uh main dispatch net and then i hear you know a single a single quick beep and i know you know because of the way i programmed it that that means that i'm listening to uh, a you know secondary conversation on attack channel um, and uh, so it's just a nice quick reference to to keep track of everything you're listening to um, <clears throat> let's see. Portland Patrol Officers, or PPI, which uh, patrol downtown Portland. Um, another another thing which I was curious to know about, and uh, uh, you might be too if you're planning on buying one of these, um, was the, the durability of the case construction, because I'm carrying this work, so... Uh, it's uh, it's black plastic. It's got a little bit of texturing here. Um, it's durable enough, but it's definitely not up to par of the you know uh, public safety grade Motorola you know radio quality. Uh, but but it works and it's held up so far. I you know I don't think I've dropped it on concrete or anything yet. But but uh, you know it's not it's not shoddy by any means. Um, it's, I have had it out, you know, being in Portland, I've had it out in the drizzling rain um, a little bit. Um, I have been pretty protective of it, but, you know, it didn't melt or anything. Uh, so we're okay so far. Um, on the right side, we have an uncovered uh, programming port, which is comparable to this blue one here. And on the top, we have a covered headphone jack, which is just a standard eighth inch, which is uh, comparable to this one here. Um, if you have any... And, comes a little belt clip hasn't broken yet uh, so that's good um, but I would recommend if you're gonna be carrying it you know in any kind of professional capacity use a pouch um, uh, antennas this is not the stock antenna that comes with this radio you can see pictures of that stock antenna all over the internet if you want uh, this is a uh, 800 megahertz BNC antenna that I picked up Let's see if I can, can get this off um, and uh, it works quite well for trunking the uh, BNC or BNC trunking the 800 megahertz uh, Motorola system we have here in the Portland area. And then this one happens to be running off of a NMO mount of a quarter wave 800 megahertz antenna. So, quick glance at those. Um, and there you can see the yellow LED solid indicating that it is Portland Patrol. Um, if you have any further questions about any of these or my experience with them, uh, I'll do my best to answer for you, but other than that, there's a quick look at both of these models side by side.